you know I have a Smith & Wesson SW22 Victory and I've been wanting to do a comparison video. It's not going to be a shooting video, but I just want to kind of do a video comparing and contrasting um, the differences between these two um, target pistols, plinking pistols, whatever you prefer to call them, but um, they are some of the two most popular target pistols out there on the market right now be besides the newest model which is the Mark IV. So those of you who uh, get the hint of that um, already know that I'm going to be talking about the Mark III. So um, both guns are Smith is decked out. Um, as you guys know you've seen my videos it's got some accessories on it. Now the Ruger Mark III 2045 is completely stock and it is a target model so it doesn't have the interchangeable grips. This was the one before they made that option. Um, by fair, go ahead and do a comparison because there is a grip mod to where you can actually add that in and uh, make it pretty much just the same gun as uh, what it is now today known as the 2245 or the Mark III. So, first thing I'm going to start with is the cases. Now, the reason I don't have the Smith & Wesson case out here is because the Smith & Wesson comes in just a cardboard box. I mean, it doesn't get any cheaper. A lot of their guns come like that, um, so it doesn't come to a surprise that it comes in a cardboard box. Now, now the Ruger, on the other hand, comes in a hard case, which is actually really nice. This one does say TM for target model right there. Now, the case is a just standard hard case, nothing fancy inside, no protection or anything. So it's really um, kind of a hit and miss. Like the cardboard box, uh, I can see the cardboard not scratching the gun in any way. Now a hard plastic case, it may not either, but um, some may prefer the hard case, some may not care if it comes with a cardboard box. Um, protection either way with this is really a 50-50 shot so giving the uh, Ruger does come in a hard case we'll give that to the Ruger um, now this is good compare to trash for those of you who may be a Ruger fan or those who may be a Smith fan and like the Victory or the Mark better than one another um, but I'm just going to kind of tell you and uh, give my opinion of what is better with these two guns and which one could be more value um, it's, but like I said, you know, it's kind of a hit and miss with depending on what you want and uh, what you kind of prefer or, or what you're comfortable with, really. So now, my Smith, I bought this case on at Walmart for like six bucks, I think it was, if that. Now they do make Smith Wesson ones, so you can actually um, put a Smith Wesson in its Smith Wesson case, and this one's actually nice and padded. It's um, it's not fancy, but it does the job. I mean, it protects my gun, and that's what I care about, especially the optic as well. Um, but I would like to get a uh, nice new case, uh, more of a protective case, more of a uh, expensive case eventually for this gun and most of my handguns that I have. So, um, but definitely giving the case to the Ruger coming out of the box as soon as you buy it. So. Now we'll talk about magazines. Both of these are 10 round magazines. Um, both of them have the same design on the side here. Uh, the Ruger has an extension here for the longer end. Um, it's got more of a 1911 style grip I guess you could say. Um, that's one really common custom mod that people do is put 1911 grips on it. But it's got that extension on the bottom to fit up in the mag, mag well or to, I guess you could say to fit flush with the bottom of the uh, frame. Now, like I said, both of these are 10 round mags. Um, these are steel. They're, well, they're, this is like a blued steel. Um, it does rub off, so as you guys might be able to tell, you can see that it's rubbed off there a little bit on the edges. It comes with these are like little keys for storing safely and securely. Now, it does come with the rail as well does the Smith & Wesson. Um, this rail has not been touched yet, but it does come with the rail. So, pretty much so far, besides the lock that comes with this gun, um, it's really almost the same that comes in the Smith & Wesson box. Uh, the lock on this one 
is more upgraded. I don't have it in here. This is actually a buddy's pistol. I just borrowed it. Um, but it actually has a fancy Ruger lock that looks just like a padlock. And now the Smith comes with the standard, um, more of like a barrel lock than a padlock. Now pretty much all you get in the Smith & Wesson is you'll get your rail, which I've already got installed on here. Um, you get an extra magazine. This is 10 rounds as well. These are stainless, which I actually prefer better because they're not going to show a lot of wear and tear since it's not like a blued finish and the plate on the bottom of it is a lot smaller it's not huge and sticking out um, now since we're talking about magazines go ahead and mention this to you guys so magazines on this gun here's this side here as you guys can tell you got release here your safety and right here is the mag release now I'm gonna press this and watch what happens push it back up there again that's as far as it comes out so some people may like this um, but I don't actually prefer it because I have to actually get my fingers in here and pull out to get it out and getting back up in there it's not hard but sometimes it can be a little bit of a hassle now the Smith on the other hand same type of design you get your mag or your bolt release here safety here and your mag release here now what happens when I pull this one out it shoots right out of the out of the mag well which I actually prefer. Um, it's extremely nice. Uh, it's not a hassle because I don't have to get my fingers in there and actually pull the bottom of the mag the magazine out. I mean, it just it'll shoot it right out in your hand. And here's another thing that I like as well. You can tell how how close the actual opening of the magwell is to the bottom of the the grip, and on the Ruger. Look how deep that is. I don't really like that. I mean, I feel like they could have made this the same exact way. Um, more design. To make it more simple. Because with such a wide opening for just a tiny mag, you're kind of fitting it in there left and right. And with this more narrow design like this, I mean, it, it can only go in one way and you're not sitting there moving around trying to adjust it. So definitely the Smith has it on magazines. I, even though they are the same 10 round mag, I just feel like the quality and the design of more of a competition pistol um, for more of an easy access magazine and mag wall, the Smith definitely has it just starting out. Um, but like I said, it is the older style 2245 Mark III but I don't believe they changed much with the magazine, so. Now triggers. I have noticed that a lot of people, especially, I've noticed that a lot of people buy what's called a victory trigger from Volkortsen for these 22 Mark, 2245 Mark III's. Now, I'm not sure why. This trigger doesn't seem bad. Now this one doesn't have the it doesn't have the magazine disconnect, so you can actually measure your take up on it, and it's about right there, which is actually really nice. Um, your follow up, follow up shots can be fast and simple. Um, now, the trigger on the Smith is actually adjustable. If you guys can see in there, there's a little adjuster screw, which allows you to adjust your um, take up, I believe. Um, I believe that's what I'm trying to get at. But you can adjust that screw so that way when you pull the trigger and then release it, it'll give you faster shots. Um, so that way you don't have to really trigger as far more of a, a quicker reaction time, I guess you could say, for this pistol. So, number two, the Smith this definitely has it on triggers, um, especially out of the box with the um, adjuster screw right there. It definitely makes it a nice piece and 
and definitely something that's worthwhile. So next I want to talk about the sights. Um, I don't have the parts with me currently for the stock barrel on the Smith and uh, stock rear optic on the Smith, but the ones on this Ruger, they're really just standard. They're steel, there's no outline on them. I mean, you really just got that picture and you got to find your sight right there. There's nothing you could really focus on in between the rear and to front sight to really um, get a quicker sight picture on your target. So, these sights are adjustable though, the rear sight is, which as well as the, um, the Smith was, but the thing I did like more about the Smith was that they were fiber optic. They were green and both front and rear were green. Now, the Smith has more of a U-shape, I guess you could say, with two dots in the, facing the back way, and your front sight as well, just a green fiber optic, just like would on any other handgun with a fiber optic uh, front sight. Now, with the sights being fiber optic and the, but both of them being adjustable, but being able to find your sight picture quicker on the Smith, um, I'm definitely gonna have to give out of the box sights to the Smith. Um, I just feel like buying, paying for a target pistol that you maybe just want to shoot out of the box, you're getting more quality so far with the Smith over the Ruger Mark 20, 2245 Mark III. Now, barrel wise, uh, nothing really here. Uh, this one, this is more of a blue finish, uh, they say. Now, the Smith is stainless just like the gun. The the bolt here is round. It's kind of shaved on top, which may make it kind of nice to weigh the way the ejection is on it. And this one does have a loaded chamber indicator on it as well. Um, but overall, the uh, sights on here are pretty, or the barrel or an upper on here are pretty standard. You're not getting anything really uh, fancy with it. You can remove the sights and put different sights on here if you choose to um, but but for a gun out of the box uh, your upper and barrel there's really nothing too much too fantastic about it um, besides the loaded in, loaded chamber indicator may help some people some people may prefer it I don't really um, mind it if I know if there's a, a round in the chamber so I would put my gun on safety and if someone goes to grab it or something then they will be warned that there's rounded chambers on safety. Now, upper receiver on this one, this is more of a simple design. So this is your upper receiver, and then you have your barrel, two separate pieces. The Mark III is one whole piece, so when you buy it, you gotta buy the whole thing. On the Smith, you can actually replace the barrel itself, as you guys see I have, and leave your upper the way it is. So that I really like. I think that's really smart and it's really simple to take down. So when you want to take this down, basically all you have to do is, is take out this screw right here on the bottom and then your barrel should come, your barrel and upper should come up, push back and out. And that should be really all it is to break this gun down for you. Once you break it down, getting the receiver out or the bolt and carrier group out is really simple it should just come straight out and that's another thing I like with the Ruger it's more complex you got more steps to go through you gotta tap it on the back to get it to pop off and this one is more of a field stripping gun you could take one wrench out there get it apart when you're in competition and have it back together in no time once you figure out what you need to get fixed um, so So I definitely like that a lot more. Now the charging handles in the back here. After I go ahead and mention these as well. I'll go ahead and lock this one back. Now the design on this one. Faces more outward. As you guys could tell. Um, I like that design more rather than uh, facing inward. The only thing I didn't really like on this when I first got it. Was when I was pulling it down. Grabbing it and letting it go maybe I was uh, 
and accidentally letting it go was I would pinch my finger several times getting used to this gun which once you're used to it, it's not really a big deal but for beginners there could be a game changer it could change your minds about it instantly if you're not willing to get used to the handgun so the design on this I'm not 100% sure now I'll go ahead and uh, show you the Ruger's which is almost as simple but said you get the grooved edge here and it's basically just cut off at the back and you have those rigid little lines here rigid little grooves here on the edge so it makes it really simple to grab and pull back and this one locks with the magazine in it, as well as the the smith which is a bonus but this one just seems a bit more easier even though you can still pinch your finger like I just did um, it's more of one of those things where or you're not going to be doing that all the time you're just going to kind of grab it and let it go um, that's what I do typically now once I've gotten used to both of these handguns but they do also make um, charging handles for them so you can buy those which I would like to get one soon but uh I definitely think the Ruger takes it on this one just because it's got that nice um, engraved area here where it's kind of cut down and leads you right to where you're wanting to grab and you don't have to just more or less slide your fingers down on the back of this one and then grab it. I This one goes in more and then comes out which that one does as well but this does have no uh, shaved edge to really lead your fingers right where you want to go. Now grips on these, um, the Ruger, you can buy Mark III grips, or you can actually interchange these to 1911 style grips. Um, a lot of people are doing that now, they actually make 1911 style frames you can purchase from Von Quartzen, um, as well as grips if you're interested in those. Um, I think if uh, you purchase one of these, and you decide to buy a frame and a barrel, you're really not buying this, you're buying a custom made gun. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is to take this down as well, you have to start by pulling this out back here. That's a takeout pin. I don't really like that, and it actually comes up here in the top, which I think is just more of a hassle. Um, once you get that out, you gotta tap it forward and do this and that, and then finally pull it apart, and it's just one thing after another. So That's another thing I don't like about the frame on this gun. Um, I feel like it could have been designed better. I feel like the grips are more square. Some people may like that square feeling, but it it's just not there for me. Now, I will I would shoot this gun left and right. I mean, I have no problem doing that. It is a fun little gun to shoot, but just the comfortability, it it's not there for me. Now, I have big hands, as you guys can probably tell. I mean, they're taller than this gun and probably definitely wider so so how thin that is with how wide it just it's kind of like the exact opposite of a full-size Glock which I don't have a problem with those because I definitely love 19s but they're just one of those things like I wouldn't want to mess around with it all the time and try to get used to it it'd just be more of a gun that I would just kind of get the um, feeling of hey you know I want to shoot this gun today, not like, oh, I can't wait to take this gun out to the range, you know. Like, this wouldn't be one of those that I would take out to the range every day. Now, on the Smith, I love the round edges on it. I like how round it is. Um, Grip-wise, you can interchange these grips as well. Um, there are some on, I believe, uh, Tactical Solutions. Then there's Volkortsen, which they don't really have a lot on their website. And then there's a uh, Tandem Cross. They have some as well. But out of the box, these grips are um, they're pleasing. I mean, they're not perfect, but they're comfortable. They're not too rough right there. If you guys like that, um, more of the the uh, shield style grips where it's kind of like a gritty feel or maybe even the um, or maybe even those little sticky grips that uh, 
talon grips, I believe they're called, that Hickok 45 always talks about. You guys would like this a lot better. That feels like a really ugly Glock Gen 4 grip um, with how rough and uh, checkered it is. I don't like that at all. Um, I prefer this um, over any day. This is a gun that I could just take out to the range and be like, I can't wait to get this out and shoot it just for comfortability and just how fun it is and how good it feels and how accessible everything is on this gun. And I want to show you this as well. On both sides, they have a little en engraved grooves for your fingers and thumbs and whatnot, which is definitely a bonus as the Ruger does not, as you guys can tell. So, grips and frame wise, Smith takes it all the way on this one as well. Um, now, the rails, the Ruger comes with a metal rail, Excuse, more of aluminum, I guess you could say, rather than just a metal. And the Smith is polymer. This one has a rear sight. And this one does not. But you have the rear sight on the gun. So um, it's really just a preference on this part. Now this sight is not exactly the best. And there's no front sight, as you guys can tell, on the barrel. But since I did plan on putting an optic on this one, it really doesn't bother me that much that the sight is polymer and it's not really that reliable but if you're wanting the rail and you're still on your iron sights the Ruger definitely takes it on that part um, the rail quality is nicer but it is going to add a little more weight on the Ruger as far from the polymer would on the uh, Victory I also like the Victory logo on this it just adds more of a flare um, the Ruger's is just more of an engraving on your gun Nothing really that fancy, as you guys can tell, but these are both budget pistols. Now, accessory-wise, the accessories are just, I mean, there's just so much you can do to these guns. But like I said, on the Ruger, you either buy a frame or when you buy a barrel, if you're looking for just a barrel, you have to buy the whole upper receiver and the barrel combined. So that's the part that really sucks because I was looking earlier today and for a custom barrel from Volkortsen it's roughly $800 and for my Smith for my barrel and my brake on the Vol from Vol Volkortsen as you guys could tell right there I paid $295 big difference this is more of your everyday shooter um, it's more of your practical shooter um, both of these could be practical, both, both of these could be everyday shooting guns, but I just prefer this. There is a more of a style in this gun to me than there is in the Ruger. Now, definitely let me know your guys' thoughts. Um, they have upgraded these guns in so many ways. Don't get me wrong, I'm not dissing you Ruger, you Ruger guys out there. I definitely enjoy this little pistol just as much as I enjoy this one. I just have more fun and um, this one was just more comfortable to me uh, definitely even out of the box it was more comfortable it just had more appeal to me when, even whenever I went to the store to purchase this gun now let me know you guys thoughts let me know if there's anything I missed let me know if there's anything you guys want to see compared with these two guns um, like I said I'm gonna have to say Smith takes it out of the box all the way um, now you Ruger guys may be a little disappointed, you may like the Rugers all the way um, just because they're the ones who pretty much started this planking besides the browning um, but planking has grown now and more people are getting into it and I would love to compare it to a Mark V which would be more accurate than a Mark III I would love to compare it to a Mark IV which would be more accurate than the Mark III but unfortunately I don't have one of those on one of those on hand right now um, I would love to get my hands on one especially the 2245s or even the light edition those things are sweet especially right out of the box um, it would definitely be a better comparison but for the ones who like the Mark III I'm sorry to say but this gun is not the most practical out of the box or the most pretty um, both of these guns are straight shooters they are absolutely beautiful uh, they are fun, they are accurate, 
Um, and they are guns that you can rely on. They don't have too many misfeeds. Uh, honestly, they really don't have any. The only time I had any with this was when I first bought it and I had three. And two were stove pipes and one was a misfeed. And this one, it's been broken in a little more. As you guys know, it is older. Um, so I didn't have any problems out of this. I'm not sure how it would be if it were new. But those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. I know this is custom. I know this is old. But either way, you can't go wrong with one of these guns. So I appreciate you all watching this. Definitely subscribe. Check out my other videos. If you guys enjoyed this, leave a like, comment, share it. I want to know your thoughts. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video. And hopefully we'll be having some fun with some shotguns.